This is AMD's Radeon 7. Is this card still worth buying in 2019? We'll get to that. What's going on guys, this is Mac for b for yb Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Radeon 7. So as you guys know, I recently purchased the AMD Radeon 7 Gold Edition. If you guys haven't seen the unboxing yet, please check the video over here. So what makes the Radeon 7 so great and why should you purchase this? For $680, this is not a cheap card whatsoever, but I think it's a great value card. What do I mean by that? I think you're getting a lot for your money when you think about purchasing a card like this. Now this card, I think it's aimed towards gamers slash content creators. So the people that like to play games at the highest settings and people that like to edit videos and all that. And I'm one of those people. So I think that this card is a perfect fit for me. I'm selling my RTX 2080 because I purchased this card and I honestly don't have a need for the RTX 2080 anymore. So yeah, um, that's how happy I am with this card. It's AMD's first seven nanometer graphics card when it first came out. And I think the most compelling part is the 16 gigabytes of high bandwidth memory and a terabyte of bandwidth, which is pretty sick. To be completely honest, I was sold on this card when I saw a video by Tally Ho Tech um, and the video was titled, Can the Radeon 7 Edit in 8K? And seeing this card just handle 8K raw footage like a champ and not having any drop frames um i was really blown away and really impressed even beating out the rtx 2080 ti so that was pretty sick uh, if you guys haven't seen talio tech's video um check it out and check out his channel he's got some great content as of june 2019 um this is the highest end amd card that you can purchase despite amd announcing two new navi cards um, none of them uh, are geared to replace the Radeon 7. Although the Radeon 7 is a Vega card, still going to beat out the 5700 XT and the 5700. Those are geared towards the mid-tier graphics cards looking for the most bang for the buck, strictly for gaming kind of cards. So what makes the Radeon 7 so great and why is it a great value? Um, in Tally Ho Tech's video, he compares the Radeon 7 to the Instinct M150, which is a enterprise slash workstation card that AMD sells and he says it goes for about five thousand dollars and it's essentially the same card except you're getting for six hundred eighty dollars so that's pretty awesome and um it's got a sick design you got three fans it's great i think the radeon 7 is just a really understated card i think a lot of people would be surprised with the kind of performance that you get with the radeon 7 especially with the driver updates that they're getting lots of games coming out with um vulcan's api um, it just performs really well. I haven't been disappointed. I typically game on my 1080p uh, monitor back there that goes up to 240 hertz. And um, comparing this to my RTX 2080, I can't tell a noticeable difference. Everyone should know that your mileage may vary depending on the titles that you guys play, depending on the resolution that you guys play in, and depending on the updates or drivers that you have at the time. Many different factors to consider, but I have tested it out for gaming and I'm pretty satisfied with what I was able to get. Uh, with this card. Speaking of gaming, let's check out those benchmarks that I did. Um, keep in mind, I have a 1080p monitor. Everything was set to the highest possible settings, and that's how I run ran my benchmarks. So let's start off with The Witcher 3. Minimum frame rate was 22, maximum was 127, and the average was 105. For World War Z, I ran the in-game benchmark, and I got a frame score of 9,147, frames 154, GP load 84%. Hey guys, Future Mac here. Sorry to interrupt. Unfortunately, I lost the footage of the rest of the benchmarks that I had. And this really sucks because there's no way for me to get access to my PC right now to check out the rest of the results. Um, yeah, so it's a little frustrating. But what I do have left um, is the 3D Mark scores that I got because it's synced up online. And for 3D Mark Time Spy, I got a score of 8,696. Comparing this to my RTX 2080, the RTX 2080 definitely beat it out. I got a score of 10,008 on the RTX 2080. The RTX 2080 definitely performed better in this benchmark, but 
take this with a grain of salt because this is a synthetic benchmark. I don't see a huge gap in performance. And it all, like I said, it all depends on the titles that you play. Now in Fire Strike Ultra, I got a score of 6,631. I wasn't able to test the RTX 2080 with this benchmark, but it's a pretty decent score, 75% above all the other results. So I'm pretty happy with that. So is the RTX 2080 better than the Radeon 7? I think it is if you're strictly just gonna be gaming. Definitely great for content creation use as well, but for my preference and what I've seen and what I want to use it for, I think the Radeon 7 for me is a better fit, which is the reason why I'm keeping it. I think that the Radeon 7 is a great card and compelling value because it's going to serve me for a long time. I'm still going to be able to play the games that I want and when I do my camera upgrade and start editing in high resolution footage, um, I'm not going to have a problem with it. So is this card still good in 2019 and should you go out and buy it? I think so. I think you're a content creator and you like the game. I think that this is still a compelling value, although the price tag is pretty high up there. I believe you get what you pay for. Okay, other things to note. The card is pretty loud and I don't really have a way to measure how many decibels it goes. I have a fractal design defined C, TG, long ass name, and I have three Corsair ML fans. Um, so it's a pretty quiet system, but it is noticeable once I'm doing some video editing or if I'm playing video games, it does get a little loud. Although it is slightly audible, when I have my headphones on, I don't really hear it. So not a big deal for me, not really a deal breaker. Although my EVGA RTX 2080 XC Ultra was a lot quieter with the fans, that card had a really annoying coil line. Even with my headphones on, I could hear it and it was really annoying. So I think that's a better trade off fan noise versus that coil wine because that coil wine was so high pitched and it just every time I was playing a game, it would just just it would just make a noise like <laughs> one of the reasons why I want to get rid of the RTX 2080. Honestly, I know it seems super shallow and it doesn't make any sense, but it was so expensive and I have my headphones on and I can still hear it. I don't want that. It's so annoying. <sighs> so with the Radeon 7, I think it is a great card. It looks fantastic. The build quality is awesome. Um, I'm just really impressed. Um, there's nothing bad I can really say about it besides the fan noise. And that's typically what you get when you get a reference design card. Uh, they're typically louder than the partner cards. So yeah, I think I'm going to hold on to the Radeon 7, get rid of the RTX 2080. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. If you found this video useful, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to the channel for more content. Quick update, I do want to apologize for the lack of content this past month. Uh, like I said, I was on vacation and unfortunately I forgot the charger for my camera. So wasn't able to produce any content. Um, I did shoot a video. It wasn't really great. So I didn't post it up or anything because the quality is not up to par. Second thing, unfortunately, as you can see, my rig is not there. Um, they're currently doing some stuff on, working on the house. So I won't be able to be here in this space and record and do my typical video. Um, so that's really going to hinder the content um, that I'm going to be putting out. Although I'm going to do my best to see what I can do um, with my laptop and whatever gear I can take with me as I'm not going to be in the house. It just really sucks because I was aiming to do a weekly video like I was doing the past couple months. <sighs> so please bear with me guys and I really appreciate all the subscribers and the support that I'm getting. You guys are awesome. I hit my goal of 250 subscribers last month and I think now we're at 260, 270, something like that. So I'm really happy about that and I'm just really happy that there's somebody tuning in. Anyways, sorry for the long video. I um, hope to see you guys very soon with new content coming up. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content and I'll see you guys in the next video.